Getting your garden started for the year is all about timing. You don't want to do things too late, but you don't want to do them too early either. And it can be really hard to know when to plant seeds inside and outside. I use a couple of tools that work in any zone to help me make predictions and decide when to plant. And they are a calendar, a thermometer, the weather forecast, and cues from nature. So I'm going to talk about how you can use those tools to make decisions about when to plant seeds. So I use a calendar to decide when I'm going to plant my seeds that I grow inside as transplants. So you want to make a pile or a list of all of the seeds that you're going to start indoors. And then you want to look up either on the seed package or in the seed catalog and see how many weeks it says till last frost before you plant. And they all should have this information pretty available. So then you want to sort all of your seeds. So have a pile that are six to eight weeks, a pile that are eight to 10 weeks and so on. And then you want to decide when you're going to use for your last frost date. So this is a bit made up because you're still a couple months out. You can look to your plant hardiness zone and then just look up what the last frost date is. It's usually a range and you can pick within that range based on your geography. If you know that you usually are in a cooler area or a warmer area within that zone. You can also pick maybe a date that you usually use to plant out. Here, a lot of people say they plant out on Victoria Long Weekend, which is May 24th. So then when you have this date picked, you want to mark it on your calendar and then you want to start counting backwards. So six to eight weeks before May 15th brings me to March 15th to April 1st. So somewhere in that range is where I want to be planting my tomatoes. So I'm going to mark those on my calendar. I'm going to put tomatoes. And then sometime in that week when I have some time, I'll plant the tomato seeds and then that should be enough time for them to be ready to go in the garden when they're not too big, not too small, just perfect. So you can do that for all of your seeds and then make a planting plan on a calendar. And then every week, maybe make a day that's your seeding day and go to it and look at the calendar and decide what you're going to plant that week. That way you're not shifting through seed packages, trying to figure it out on the fly planting things that maybe you don't need to plant yet or planting things too late. When I'm planting seeds outside, I use a thermometer. So the thermometer is important to know what the air temperature is. And we have thermometers around so we can pay attention to how warm it's getting outside. But more important than that is what is the soil temperature. So you can use any kind of thermometer to use this. There you know, records in the right range. You could use a thermometer from your kitchen. We have an old darkroom thermometer. You can buy a compost thermometer that sticks right in the ground. So from there, you want to decide when to plant things in the soil. So there's a lot of cold hardy crops that you can plant out way before the last frost date. They can handle a little bit of frost. It doesn't harm them. And they just need the soil to be warm enough for them to germinate. So usually for crops like peas, radishes, greens, lettuce, spinach, kale. This is in the range of sort of four degrees to 10 degrees. Some of them like to germinate warmer than that, but they will germinate in those cold temperatures. So that's a good time to start planting out in your garden. And you can look up those temperature ranges pretty easily and then figure out what crops can go out at what point in time. Even if the air temperature is still pretty cold, these crops will grow and they might not grow very fast. So if you can get them to germinate because the soil is warm, then they'll grow and you can cover them up to make it be a little bit warmer. So maybe with a cold frame or a cloche or a cover or some row cover, that's going to help them just have a little bit more warmth and it's going to speed their growth along. And then to decide when we plant the transplants outside, which are our heat loving crops, we're actually going to look at the weather forecast. So no matter what we picked for our last frost date, when we were making those calculations earlier in the year, we have to decide when we think an actual frost is going to happen. So for that, I watch the weather forecast pretty closely. I'm looking for nights that are below zero, and I'm looking specifically for nights where it's cold and clear, and there's not a lot of wind, because that's when the ice crystals in the air will settle on the ground and that can cause a frost. So the frost will actually kill these warm season crops. They need both warm temperatures and they need warm soils. And that's why we usually start them inside. Things like peppers want soil as warm as 25 degrees Celsius in order for them to germinate. So we're not going to find that outside until the middle of the summer and then it'll be too late in the season for them to really be big enough to set flowers and then make fruit. 
So to make sure that these crops don't end up being harmed by frost, we can either wait until we're pretty sure that the frost has ended. Here, even with the last frost date that I estimate at May 15th, we've had frosts as late as June 6th. I always keep track of that every year. So maybe being more conservative and waiting is better for you, but you could also plant out earlier than that by a little bit and then just be ready. So watch for those cold temperatures, watch the weather forecast to see if you have any frost coming, and then be ready with the row cover, with a blanket to put around the base of the plant, something to protect it from those freezing temperatures. So that's gonna actually depend a lot on your backyard as well. If you have a raised bed that's in a sunny location, that's not going to be affected by a frost the same way as a low bed that's along the side of your house that's more exposed to the surrounding area. So what you want to do is plant in those beds first that you're confident are less susceptible to frost. And then the other tool that I've started using to predict when to plant is cues from nature. So phenology is actually the study of the timing of biological instances in nature. And this is something that we all do every year. You notice when the crocuses first come out. You notice when the first of are in bloom. You notice the succession of plants. I always note the first coltsfoot flowers that I see. They're basically the first flowers out uh, and that can happen really, really early. So these cues from plants as well as birds, animals, and insects have to do with the temperature, the day length, the amount of water, all of these cues from our environment that our plants that we're planting in our garden also need. So if you can observe when nature is ready for these things to happen and that can help you understand when the conditions are right for your garden. So every year I really recommend keeping a notebook of when you do different things in the garden, when you plant seeds, and then also make a note of these seasonal cues. And then next year what you can do is line them up and better understand without using a calendar and without using the thermometer. And then nature can tell you about the natural environment and what's happening. So that might be an early spring, it might be a late spring, might be a wet spring. Things are gonna be different according to the natural conditions. And I think that's one of the most exciting things about starting in your garden is that every year it gives you a new opportunity to take notes and figure out where your successes are and where your failures are, the things that you did right and the things that you did wrong, what you started too early and what you started too late. And you can write all this down and then next year you can figure it out and do it a little bit better. So the trickiest part about gardening isn't really timing, it's just doing it. So just plant those seeds, get things started. It may not work out perfectly, but it's going to work out pretty great. In the middle of the summer, you're not going to be thinking about the calendar or the temperature. You're going to be thinking about your beautiful garden.